not able to hear you yes can you speak louder okay uh, good morning are you able to listen me first of all yes Hello. sir yes sir so yesterday we have started with interrupts 8086 right so what we have covered is what is interrupt like if you connect anything with microprocessor that device or software will generate the interrupt and microprocessor will serve that right uh, for servicing that particular device like keyboard or mouse you are having interrupt service routine isr right uh, why interrupt needed because microprocessor continuously can't ask each and every device to check the status so once device get ready device will generate the interrupt and microprocessor will handle it in 8086 we are having 256 different interrupts available it ranges from 0 to 255 fine uh, what we have seen is now it is an interrupt so as we know if it is my normal program if this is my interrupt so when interrupt generated you need to change the flow of your program so you need to change your ip now we are having 256 different interrupts so there are chances that they are not in the same segment right it can be in different segment fine so in that case you just don't need to simply change ip you need to change the cs also right code segment value also so you need to change the cs value and you need to change the ip value so where these values are stored they will stored in the stack now not in memory that they will get stored in stack how stack will get access using stack pointer sp and it will go in reverse order sp sp minus 1 sp minus 2 how it will get stored so there is a fundamental law what is the fundamental law lower byte stored in lower memory address and higher byte stores in higher memory address right yes okay there is one more saying that you can't mess with stack during your uh, interrupt service routine why because it will take the address where he where your interrupt want to return from the stack so if i push something on stack and if i not pop it out it will get the wrong address so that, that's why number of push operation should be equal to number of pop operation in your stack that also we have seen right hello are you there hello yes sir so this much stuff we have already studied now today's question is what about flex what that means suppose this is my program here i have done some operation and i have changed my flag value so suppose uh, carry flag is equal to 1 uh, zero flag is equal to 0 and suddenly interrupts get generated so i will go here i will execute isr interrupt service routine finish it and come back right now suppose during my isr also i have changed my flag values because of my code and my c becomes 0 and z becomes 1 so here now flags are like this is my flag register flag register is a shared property right it will be shared by everyone so here at this point of time what i will get i will get c is equal to 0 and z equal to 1 right but my initial value was c equal to 1 z equal to 0 so it should not get changed and here i am getting wrong values get the problem hello hello sir bachu samjhao nahi ek baar okay if this is my normal program fine if my carry flag is equal to 1 0 flag is equal to 0 at this point of time fine an interrupt gets generated so i am going to interrupt service routine fine isr i will execute the code of isr now here because of some instruction my c becomes 0 and my z becomes 1 fine done yes, yes sir okay now because of return statement i got written to my main program here fine okay now this instruction is actually depend on this instruction because this is my main program fine so in this instruction what i want c should be equal to 1 and z should be equal to 0 but because your isr has changed the value of c and z here i am getting wrong values get it yes here what i here what i will get i will get c equal to 0 and z equal to 1 that is wrong that is not i need it right get the problem yes sir yes 
hello okay so because of this problem okay what we do when interrupts get generated what we'll do first we store cs and ip on stack fine second we fetch the value of new cs and ip we fetch this value from where hello can you answer me yesterday we have seen we fetch the value of cs and ip for isr from where we fetch the value of cs and ip hello IVP yes interrupt vector table okay how can i get the location in interrupt vector table that suppose interrupt vector table is of 1 kb right so from that 1 kb where my address is stored actual address of isr how can i get to know that into 4 yes if interrupt number is n simply multiply with 4 that location will contain the address of isr so fetch the address and now because of this issue of flag you also need to do one more thing in your stack you need to push your flag register get it so this is also happened when any interrupt occurs what happens when interrupt occurs you store the value of csip on stack so now your stack will look like this at any point of time when interrupts get generated you need to occupy 6 byte okay why 6 byte 2 bytes for ip 2 bytes for cs and 2 bytes for flags why 2 bytes flag register is of 16 bit that's why you require two more bytes so 6 bytes are always occupied when any interrupts get generated value will get stored and then you will fetch the value and everything occurs fine understand hello yes sir okay so now flag get stored and when you come back you simply do it in a reverse order so first thing will get pop up first so this will get pop up first this will get pop up next and this get pop next so when you find out the rt instruction you need to pop out the values fine yes hello yes sir so what i have covered is uh first flags are also get popped are also stored in stack right when interrupt occurs so keep in mind this thing okay next is there is a difference between rt instruction which you normally use and there is a instruction called irt interrupt return so in interrupt this instruction this instruction is not rt this is irt why rt instruction we use in function in assembly language we call it procedure okay and this is used in isr interrupt service routine it is also called it will only return but the work done by rt is different and work done by irt is different how it is different when rt instruction is there you just need to pop the value of cs and ip right if it is in a different segment if it in a same segment you just need to pop the value of ip if it is irt again you need to pop the value only on a return but here you need to pop the value of cs ip or pop the value of ip plus you also need to pop the value of flags because just we have seen that we also push all the flags on to this stack so this is the extra work that we are supposed to do if you are in a interrupt service routine that's why instead of rt you need to use irt instruction in your interrupt service routine clear yes sir done okay other than this your interrupt service routine get called before that your microprocessor is also doing one thing what it will do it will make your if flag and tf flag zero okay so now you need to understand what is if flags and what is tf flag what is if flag it comes in chapter number 1 it is interrupt flag fine and this one is trap flag okay now why interrupt flag is used okay for that 
we have already discussed yesterday there are two form of interrupt software interrupts and hardware interrupts okay in 8086 you are having two hardware interrupts one is called nmi and one is called intr the full form of this is non maskable interrupt and this is interrupt routing simple interrupt right now why it is non maskable interrupt so it can't be masked so once this pin get activated you need to handle this interrupt intr get can get stop so it is non maskable interrupt so it is maskable interrupt fine so what this intra flag do intra flag ia flag is only working with hardware interrupts not software interrupts make this thing in mind ia flag is only working with in hardware interrupts what is the meaning of intra flag is zero if intra flag is zero that means all the interrupt are disabled what that mean when i am executing my isr i will not want any other interrupt to come in between as yesterday asked by shreyanshu that what if so many interrupts come in between when you are executing isr so normally your microprocessor is deactivating all the other interrupts while you are executing isr so there are less chances of multiple what you can say interrupt service routing but now concentrate here hello are you there yes sir okay what i am teaching is first when interrupt get generated microprocessor will make your ia flag interrupt flag 0 tf flag 0 this is my interrupt flag and this is my trap flag fine so now why what the meaning what is the meaning of if flag equal to 0 that means your interrupts are disabled so when you are executing your isr interrupt service routine other interrupt will not get generated right stop all interrupts are stop then how that multiple interrupts can be possible why stack is used that question can come in your mind but as i said there are two form of interrupts one is called software interrupts another is hardware interrupts right there are two types of interrupt in hardware n m i n i n t r if you go through your 8086 pin diagram you will get this two pins because this is hardware interrupt so check your pin diagram of 8086 and you will get this nmi pin will be there and intr is there if there will be a nmi interrupt when you are executing your isr and if at this point of time if nmi is get generated you need to handle it you can't stop it get it so though my ia flag is zero though it is zero still if nmi pin will get some interrupt you need to handle it okay flag ma gamme te hoy nmi e to handle karvu ch pade so what is the advantage if i put put ia flag equal to 0 the advantage is you can stop this intr so what that mean microprocessor will stop all intr flags when it execute your instruction sorry interrupt service routine get it other than that all the software interrupts can be called at any point of time so it hardly affect with flags so it is also get triggered and you need to handle it so multiple interrupts are possible the only thing is your microprocessor will not allow intr interrupt during your isr get it hello yes sir microprocessor interrupt service routine ne handle karva jaye te pehla इंटरप फ्लेग ने जीरो कर दी एट बीजो कोई आई एन टी आर नाम इंटरप जनरेट नहीं थे इन बिट्वीन देट्स इट दीस इज दी मीनिंग ऑफ दीस ऑल थिंग डन ओके सेम वे इट विल डू ट्रेप फ्लेग इक्वल टू जीरो वॉट देट मीन ट्रेप फ्लेग इज यूज फॉर सींगल स्टेप ट्रेसिंग सो नाव यू कान डू सींगल स्टेप ट्रेसिंग so that is not पॉसिबल वंस दी आई एस आर इज गोइंग ऑन सो वन वन स्टेप कान बी पॉसिबल वेन योर 
interrupt get generated then when we do single step it is actually a debugging if you know c and if you have done programming in c if you press f7 key you can go into debugging mode and at a time you can execute one line and you can check the status of all the registers so same work is done by tf trap flag single stepping so when interrupt get generated and you are handling isr interrupt service routine your trap flag is also get zero so you can't do single stepping clear yes sir so finally this is it for all the interrupt process so i am revising full interrupt process again for all of you okay this is my normal program concentrate okay main program here interrupt get generated suppose i n t n fine so first step what your process do first store cs colon ip okay so on to this stack this is my stack not memory keep in mind this is my stack pointer so here cs lower value cs higher value ip higher value ip lower value will get stored second point fetch cs and ip from ivt right so i am having a interrupt vector table in memory the location of my memory is fixed 0 0 0 0 0 to one kb location get it here my ivt is stored so i will fetch that value of cs and ivt and it will store in cs and ivt sorry cs and ip okay third step at the same time it will push all the flags onto the stack so in here flag register will get stored flag flag done other than that fourth step it will make intra flag equal to 0 tf flag equal to 0 once this much process gets done okay my pro like microprocessor go to the particular interrupt service routine execute this instruction here i am having i r e t instruction so when i get that i r e t instruction okay what i am supposed to do i am supposed to do fifth pop all the value how many values 6 flags cs and ip and i will come back here and here i am executing my main program and my program will get finished this is what happens when any interrupt occur and in ivt how can i get the value of my cs and ip so for that i will multiply n into 4 whatever address i will get on that address go to four location why four location cs required two location ip required two location so total four locations will get fetched up and it will get stored in cs and ip this is what happens when interrupt get generated clear yes sir i think this is quite clear fine now the final topic as far as interrupt is concerned again just for the revision there are two types of interrupt one to one is called software what is software interrupts in int instruction that you are writing into the program right and hardware interrupt can be of two type one is called n m i non maskable one is i n t r generated from the outside pin okay this is non maskable so you need to handle it compulsory this can be masked fine software interrupts can be your int instruction int 21 h a h 04 c 00 h e x so this is my software interrupts clear now in 8086 there are how many interrupts 256 interrupts number starts with 0 1 2 3 4 5 2 31 and 32 onwards till 255 these are the interrupts available in 8086 these interrupts 5 to 31 are reserved for future use so now currently in 80 pentium and all we are having all these interrupts available in 8086 these are not defined so it is just blank space 5 to 31 32 to 
to do 55 all our software interrupts different and this four are predefined and used for system so what these four interrupts are doing zero one two three and four so for that let's see this are you able to see the screen yes sir so as you can see your as i already said interrupts can be hardware can be software can be maskable can be non maskable fine this is nmie pin fine highest priority you need to handle it then it is intr it can get masked then software interrupts in software interrupts as you can read it here i will make it zoom for you people first is type 0 so this is zero interrupt what it do division by zero zero so when you by mistake divide your number with zero in your program then it will go into infinite loop right your answer is infinity so that is not possible so it will generate an interrupt so which interrupt will will get generated at that point of time zero interrupt fine same way type one interrupt is single step interrupt so it is actually a trap flag will get set and your interrupt will get generated so what it will do after every instruction you can check the value of your register and you can debug your program that is type one this is the work of type one interrupt type 2 is non maskable interrupt so nmi is stored on location 2 so can you tell me from this the code for nmi is stored on which location the code of nmi interrupt isr interrupt service routine for nmi is stored on which memory location hello hello are you there are you able to yes, hear me okay isr is stored in memory and where it is stored that we can get it from ivt yes in interrupt vector table yes yes sir so i need to go to ivt but in which location in ivt i need to check hello in ivt on which location i need to check ivt is a big table of 1 kilobyte right there are so many addresses are stored for different isr so if i want to check the address of nmi where i need to check it is very simple 2 into 4 Eight. So on location eight, I will go. I will fetch the four value, and that four value will tell me the address of interrupt service routine of non-maskable interrupt. Get it? Yes, Hello? sir. This is number two. So if you want to get the address of interrupt service routine of number two, you need to multiply with four. You need to go to IVT. Once you get that four value, jump there and you can execute the well like code, and that code is of nmi isr done yes sir next is 3 it is breakpoint interrupt and fourth is overflow interrupt so this is what you need to just remember for the sake of mcqs otherwise the main concept we have already covered fine hello yes sir yes. okay so this is it for what you can say uh interrupt and interrupt service routine i think it is quite clear fine yes sir yeah is it clear yes sir okay so other than this what we have covered today how interrupt works what is interrupt vector table what in like your microprocessor do when it goes for handling the interrupt other than this there are two more things which is in your syllabus and you need to do it yourself that is the homework and for that homework we'll have a quiz soon so i want all of you to do that homework interrupt 21h interrupt 10h and interrupt 16h which interrupts interrupt 21h interrupt 10h and interrupt 16h 16h you need to study these three interrupts okay and will let me show you
and we'll have a quiz based on that are you able to see my screen yes sir okay i n t 21 h in 8086 microprocessor right so let's search that uh okay i n t 21 h okay what they have explained let's see okay as you can see this is i n t 21 h function value 0 function 1 function 2 so based on what value you insert into your h register it will work differently if you insert 4c00h it will stop your program if you enter 09h it will display something on screen yes yes so these are the functions of your interrupt 21h and for different function you need to insert different value into h register if you can see, if I make it zoom, see, uh, let me show something, get input status. So what it will do, checks whether a character is available from the standard input device or not. How you can do that, put h equal to 0bh, call the interrupt 21h and this is what you will get. It will tell you the answer. So same way, uh, let us check someone has explained it properly then we can go for that also yeah okay now this is not that good so forget it dos interrupts okay let us check this uh, list of interrupts that are currently supported by emulator. Okay. Functions. So here it is interrupt 21 H. You can see function number. So move H comma 01. What it will do? It will take the input without echo. So it is quite nicely explained here. So you can directly take. If you take 09 H, it will take string in output it will display something on screen if you take 4c00h what it will do it will terminate the current program so this is what already written so you can go through this website read this inter 21h same way you are having 16h and 10h let me search uh, 16h and 10h Okay, so list of services of interrupt 16H, 8086 interrupts, right? So you can go through this. Here all the interrupts are given to you. So you can go interrupt 16H, 00 value. What it will do? Check for keyboard in the keyboard buffer. You can go through this website and you will get all the interrupts. And you can check what each interrupt do. So if it is interrupt 10H, 001, what it will do? Set text mode cursor shape. And all this you can try it in your emulator also. So I think this link is quite good. Let me copy this. From where I can copy? Okay. So sam3 paste okay what you are supposed to go through 21 h then hello are you there 16 good 16 h sorry 10 H. wait a minute lucky down here and Damage. this thing you need to study also link is already shared fine good enough yes sir so this is it for today's session and i hope you people get it right no need to come again at 11 mm -hmm. this is it for today's session do this yes, sir.
stuff by yourself we'll send the video soon bye bye